there's a uh, there's a little verse of scripture and y'all forgive me i i'd like to not got out of bed it's having one of them i don't know what it is that throws fits in my body where it can't don't want to move but i feel a little achy this morning no it's not the corona the the it ain't that because if i have i've had it for about 10 years now so uh it ain't that but anyway it's hard to get my mind off of that hurting and aching like that but to me i have just a wonderful glorious thought uh it's not because i'm saying it but because it comes from god's word now this is a very familiar passage of scripture but you, have you ever read a scripture over and over and believed it, but then all of a sudden something hits you out of it, and man, you you sit there and went, wow, and your mouth all, well, that's the way I did with this in Hebrews 11. You all can go over there with me in that if you want. And I want to show you something that to me is absolutely fascinating. And I hope it will minister to you as it did to me as I thought and meditated on. In fact, let me tell you a, a little secret. I don't know how Brother Tom does this, but I can tell you how I do it. Instead of sitting down saying, hmm, i got to find a sermon to preach on or something, I usually find something I've been studying that has blessed me and spoke to me and done something in my heart, and then I take it and kind of put it together with some scriptures and share what I feel like the Lord has already shared with me. So if you've got Hebrews eleven six, let's all read the verse 6 there. You don't have to read it with me, but follow along. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, what does that say? Must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now that last part's what I'm going to zero in. But, but just bit by bit there, it, it tells us without faith, without believing, without honestly believing from the heart that God does exist. Now, I think most of us here we have arrived at the conclusion that number one, that this world just didn't form itself. I'm never so amazed as I am when great, tremendous minds of learning and educated minds get up and honestly uh, they, they teach that this world just happened by itself out of some cell or something. Well, where did the cell come from? Well, it just bang, but where did the bang? There had to be a point of origination, and to think otherwise reveals just how ignorant somebody is to me. So I've concluded that there is a God that created this world that you and I are on. He set the laws in motion in order that we could procreate and, and replenish and multiply, and you and I are here as part of his creation. I've also reached the conclusion that he did not leave us in ignorance, but he gave us his word. And the Holy Spirit that authored that word now comes to abide and dwell in the heart of the believer and can help you and lead you into this word and show you great and marvelous things that are contained therein. People said, I've read the Bible and it was really boring. I agree it is boring. If you read it apart from the aid and the help of the Holy Spirit. If you just read it, it's one of the most boring things that ever was. But if you read it and that divine presence is hovering over you. And it's his way to communicate and speak to you. It will become something that will feed you, strengthen you, and bless your soul. So you have to believe that he is. Sometimes when we pray... I don't know how you are, but there's a lot of times I pray there in the living room of the mornings when I'm up by myself in the quiet still of the morning. That's a good time to pray. But we need to realize, I feel like I'm just standing there sometimes talking to myself. I don't sense anything. I don't have tingly warm feelings. I don't have no overwhelming fear or, or greatness or vastness of some kind that, that grasp a hold of me and shake. None of that. No emotional feelings whatsoever. 
But we have to believe that when we call out the name of our Lord and we acknowledge it's by the Holy Spirit and through the blood of Christ that we address the Heavenly Father, this Bible, if we're going to believe it, assures us that we have an audience with the Almighty God that created everything and redeemed our souls from sin and death. Now, that's pretty fast. You, got it. you may not feel like it. I know a lot of times I don't feel like I'm talking to nothing but a wall or something. But he is. We must believe that he is, that I am talking to him. That my words are not just going out here into nowhere. That there is someone whose ear has been bent low. And they're taking the time to put their hand to their ear and bend that ear down to hear very carefully everything I've got to say. Very interested in hearing what do you have to say to me this morning, son. He's very interested. And those prayers carry weight with them. So we got to believe that he is, believe that we're talking to him even when we don't feel like it. But then you need to believe that this is the part I want to zero in on here just for a few moments, that he rewards people. You know, we, we always like to go to work for a place that says when you do this and when you're here so many days without missing, we'll reward you. In other words, we're going to give you something special. We're going to give you a little something extra besides the salary you got coming to you. We're going to have a special day of recognition where all the attention is turned to you and we call out your name and we give you a gift certificate and you are given something a little extra. We kind of sometimes may say, good, I want to see what they're going to give me. Well, I can tell you this, if you work for a school and drive a school bus, I wouldn't let my hopes get real high. You might get a little something, and it's appreciated, but it's not going to be something earth-shaking and world-changing, I can tell you that. But I, w would you think that God Almighty would reward you with something that had no value to it? Now, most people come to God, and if they think He's going to reward them, they're looking for a material blessing. Well, maybe they need a material blessing. If that's what they need, Maybe he'll give it to them. They need some clothes to wear or something like that. But most people got more clothes than they could wear in a year. Four cars in the driveway and they want a newer one and a bigger one and a better one. And they preach a God that rewards his children. He dotes on them and spoils them and, and gives them all these material things. And if you're not walking around with a pocket full of money and ten cars to drive in your own personal jet, you ain't very anointed. Well, I'm going to tell you what, a gospel like that's a gospel of self, and I'd run from it. God's rewards that he gives, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, are some, those things will turn to dust and rust and mount to nothing someday. But the things that God blesses your soul with, the rewards that he brings your way, are things that will last eternally. They're things that will go beyond the grave and into the next world. They're things that will enrich your soul, enrich your walk. They're beneficial to you, and most folks don't realize it. But notice who he rewards these. You know, if God's going to give you something, I don't think it's some little temporary trinket that will entertain you for a moment or two and then you'll grow bored with it and toss it aside like children do a lot of times. you remember the night when you was praying and God gave you this scripture and how it blessed you at that time and gave you the strength that was needed. <laughs> Excuse me. I remember Brother Tom talking about one time he had to preach and he didn't know what to preach. And he was wondering what to say. I forget where you was. I don't know if you was Salem or somewhere. And he saw a piece of scripture and it blessed him. And he shared it with me and it blessed me. But before he got up and he preached that which God had shared with him. And guess what? It's still on his heart. It's still a source of blessing he can go back to. It will rejuvenate, revive, bless, encourage. All when God gives you a reward. 
I want you to know it's something that will stick with you and it will mean something to you if it come from him and you realize and acknowledge. This just wasn't something I dreamed up. This was something God imparted to me. More precious than gold or silver. Now, uh, the Bible says he rewards people with those kind of things. And who are the ones that he rewards? Those that diligently seek him. Now, most folks have got the idea that once they come to a knowledge of salvation and repentance from dead works and faith in God through Jesus, that they found Him, and they have. Or rather, He found them, actually. You ever heard somebody, I found the Lord? Well, He wasn't the one lost, you were. But at any rate, they feel like I've encountered Him, I found Him, we can stop seeking now. Much like the wise men that followed his star. Listen, when we read that story, we need to realize that didn't transpire in a week or two. That transpired over a long period of time. It took diligence. It took effort. And not only that, I am sure they encountered all kind of frustrations, disappointments, and discouragement to dampen their spirits that would cause most people to abandon their, their uh, pursuit, abandon what they were doing, and go on back home to the comforts of home and forget this thing about what that star in the sky meant. But no, their hearts had became inflamed by that. Their hearts had become set on that and their thoughts, it occupied their thoughts steadily. And there was one thing and one thing only that meant something. And that was, they knew that meant a king had been born. And they wanted to find him at all cost. That meant more to them than they, they left the safeties of home, the securities of home. And they went on a, a journey to hunt and to find. I'm sure there were long nights. I'm sure there were moments when doubts and confusions crept in. I'm sure when they looked up and, wait a second, wait a second, maybe lost their bearing, and, and those type of things were experienced. But they kept seeking. Why? Because they knew somewhere in their heart, and it didn't come by their own learning. God had dropped something down into their spirit. It came from God. It, it, it originated with God. He placed a knowing in their heart and mind that you keep on. Well, how long? How much further? We've come a long way. We went over mountains and hot nights and days and desert suns and, and, and we've endured all kind of hardship. How much longer? No answer. <clears throat> Just a knowing that if I'm persistent and I stay the course, someday, somewhere, someday, the God that I'm seeking will be faithful and he'll reward me with something that just everybody don't have. And that's what he does. Those little moments where those scriptures are dropped in your heart and where they minister to you, I want you to know are little things that he show you. Why, I never saw that before. You wouldn't have found it if you weren't seeking it wouldn't have come to you. Don't ever treat that like that's just a nice thing. Because I got news for you. There's a lot of people in this world who do not have that knowledge that came to you. There's a lot of folks that don't know. Now I'm not blowing you up and blowing my head up. And we're not going to be superior and cocky and arrogant. Because I'm going to tell you, every time God shared something with me, it didn't make me cocky and arrogant. It made me crawl down in the dirt somewhere. Why would you show something so glorious and heavenly and wonderful that it, that it leaves me? Wow, ain't the word for it. Why would you show that to me? Where did it come? Did I earn it? Not in a thousand years. It was because I was seeking... But guess who put the seek in there for me to seek? Oh, folks, this is a marvelous thing when you realize that when I come to salvation and I found the Lord, the journey has not ended. It has just begun. That's it. That's it. Well, I found it. It is the truth. 
that in Jesus Christ you will find all knowledge, all wisdom, all blessing. You'll find the very wisdom and the treasure house of God in Jesus Christ because in Him dwelleth all fullness of the Godhead bodily. You don't need to look for God outside of Jesus Christ. It's a vain and foolish waste of time to seek for wisdom and understanding outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. Foolish. Amen. But when you come to Him, the journey hasn't ended. You say, I found Him, but I'm seeking Him. Well, what are you seeking Him for if you found Him? It's because... I'm being drawn into Him. There's more of Him. You can't exhaust God. There's deeper depths to explore, higher heights. There's greater ways to know Him and to look upon Him and be awestruck, to look with great wonderment and, and, and look and think, what is it? And to realize you're talking to something way beyond you. It's a shame that Christians get saved and they stop right there. A crying shame. Why? Because there's more to be had. There's more to know. There are blessings that you and I have never dreamed of that await us. Oh, it's worth the wait. I got you. Listen, because someday we'll gather at the river and our eyes will be open and we'll look. I don't know what, what it will be, but I think there's a lot of things that trouble me now. won't even matter. But all that day when I look and think, I'll tell you one thing that I'll realize beyond words, beyond other worlds, and that is I'm here because He redeemed me and I will realize that redemption story and redemption song is not just a nice Sunday school story or something like that but it goes so deep into the depths of God redemption story redemption's love and the power of it all to redeem a fallen child of hell a son of Adam and make him shine in the image of God what an awesome thing now Real quickly, I want to refer to three or four scriptures. Seeking Him. Now, seeking Him, beloved, is, is chasing after Him. And many times the soul is not satisfied. And you may be tempted, well, I've sought and sought and sought and ain't found nothing. Oh, you picked up things along the way, I assure you. But you know what? You can never arrive at a place where I'm here. I got it all, I know it all, and stop seeking no, no. Who would want to? Who would want to stop when there's more marvelous things and acts and great works of power to behold in the one we serve? We've seen nothing yet. Now, so seeking God, the Bible says they that come to God must believe that He is rewards those that diligently seek Him. Somebody tell me what diligently means. Exactly. I mean, you're going to approach this with reverence. You're not going to look, well, let's look over here. Well, I think it says that somewhere. And just nonchalantly walk along and, and treat it as though it's nice if you got it, but you'll make do without it. No, it's something that fascinates you, thrills your heart. You look into the mysteries of God and realize he is saying something here. What's he saying? I've heard people, I saw a little cartoon on the computer about this where people's hollering at God saying, God, would you please speak to me? Please speak. And a big hand reaches down out of the cloud with a Bible in it and says, here. That's the truth. You say, well, that's dis disappointing. Oh, it's not. When you begin to carefully... Pour over those pages. What are you doing? I'm seeking Him. There's something in my heart, David said, as the heart, which is a, a, a little baby deer, H-A-R-T, not this, but as the heart, the little baby deer, as it pants for the water. Because it knows its survival depends on finding water. It absolutely must find water. Not finding water is not an option. As that heart pants, 
It's desperate. Its survival is at stake. It means everything to that little deer to find water. David said just like he pants after water in a frantic search to find water, he said, that's how my soul thirsts after thee, O God. There's another place in, in the, the, the scriptures where David said, my soul followeth hard after thee. When I got saved, that satisfied one thirst, but it created a much larger thirst for him. I want to know this one that would do such a thing yeah. as invade my life. I want to know him. He's not offended by that. He's not the least bit offended. And even though you come honestly, sincerely to seek Him, to draw into Him more, to understand more, to experience more of Him, He'll at times keep drawing back to keep you coming. Well, why would He do that? Oh, brother, wonder of wonders, this God that we serve. Oh, I tell you the truth. Now to those that diligently, very carefully, meticulously seek after Him. They lay other things aside in order that they may devote that time to Him. They're constantly looking, searching in things and praying and pouring over scriptures. Sitting down and talking to another brother in the Lord. Digging their mind, picking so they might between the two of them gain a better understanding. He rewards people like that. Let's go just for a moment over to 2 Chronicles 19.3 and just get, there's just two or three scriptures here, but I, I just got three of them because I want you to see that even in, in, the, in the Old Covenant here, that emphasis is laid on kings who had come into covenant with God and who were uh, had received circumcision in the flesh, received the signs and the covenants and all like that, but they still found times when they needed to seek the face of this one they were in covenant relationship with as a nation. In chapter 19, Jehoshaphat was a, a, a king, and the children of Moab and Ammon teamed up together, and they were going to come up and, and fight Jehoshaphat, and they had it in their hearts to destroy him. Now, Jehoshaphat did not say, well, let's just stand on the promises. We've already in covenant with God. We know what His commandments are. We've got His word. We're obedient. We observe the Sabbath, the law, and all these rituals and animal sacrifices, all that stuff. No, he didn't say that. Look at verse 2. Then there came... Some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be of Hazen Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. And look what his reaction was. And he set himself to do what? Seek the Lord. You see, he lives in us. He dwells in us. We have access to His throne of grace. But there are still times we have to seek this God that we've already found and got access to. That ain't making sense, Brother Bruce. That's about like saying it's four foot long, but it's eight foot long. Contradiction. No, this is the, the strangeness that I find within the Scriptures at times. He says he began to seek the Lord and he proclaimed the fast. He got serious because now he's got to, listen to this, experience God in a greater way than what he has in the past. We don't get too old. We don't get to living to God for God too long to where there are not new experiences. And the one scripture says that his mercies are new uh, every morning and that great is his faithful. Mercies are new every morning. You can't exhaust God. And let me tell you, it's worth finding out something. I used to have an old saying in, in the insurance business when, when I worked for them. They used to say, it's easy when you know how and it's fun when you win one. Well, you know, that's kind of a carnal saying, but I want you to know it is great when you realize 
You know, I learned something else about God I didn't know. Boy, that's, that's something. I thought I knew everything. The more I learn, the more I find out just how dumb I am and how much I don't know. Much can be added to my knowledge. I got news for you. Look over to chapter 26. Now let, let's start reading there at verse 1. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah. Chapter 26, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 1. All the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah after the king slept with his fathers. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 2 years in Jerusalem. <clears throat> his mother's name was, <coughs> excuse me, Jecoliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all his father Amaziah did. Now look at verse 5 here. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in visions of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Did, did you, did, this is not written here just for, this is written here for us to, to learn something here. It said that he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. In other words, he thought it was worth his time to go and sit and listen to somebody that had already experienced God in certain ways and let them share their superior understanding things. He said he's got some understanding I don't have. And instead of saying, oh, well, I'm doing just as good as he, I don't think that's necessary. It was not a waste of time for him to go and perhaps sit at this man's feet. It was not a waste of time for him to just uh, to go up to the, to the temple and learn of God in the sanctuary. Hear the, the laws of Moses read. You know what? I was up here yesterday at Jackson. Nothing wrong with the, the, I'm not down on people for having these events. They had a big wrestling event there at Jackson High School. And I had to take a load of uh, choir and stringed instruments from the, the band there at, at Sykes. And they had over in another building, they had some kind of competition there. And I took them up there. And I had a place to let them out. And I couldn't hardly get through there. People strung up over that hill, lines and herds and droves of them in there. Many of them drove for a long way off to watch their kids engage in a, a sports, which is all right with me. And uh, my wife went up there because her grandson was there, and she told me there was kids that pulled their hair and squalled and stomped and caused they lost in there. There were very emotional reactions. And I sat there as I saw this endless line of people five and six deep all across there coming up and and you you couldn't uh, you it would to get in there you'd have to work your way through the people which i eventually did to get a hot dog and i looked there was no place to set people i thought wouldn't it be something if folks done that at church wouldn't that be something if if you open the doors and they're already strung out here in lines waiting on on everything this man here thought it was worth his time to lay aside his own interest because this man had understandings in the visions of God and trust me, that would be worth hearing and listening to. I used to go down to, to, to Sykeston to an elderly gentleman's house and I knew I was going to get a verbal thrashing when I went. He was harsh and critical. But you know what? You could sit down and he could talk of those experiences. He knew a man from what was called the Azusa Street Revival, different things and all he told while. And I could get him talking about that. And all of a sudden, don't ask me to explain this, there was a part of me that could in some small way touch that which happened, which I consider to be a wonderful time of visitation. A visitation that I don't see much of nowadays. So it was worth my time to sit back Put something else on, oh, I need to go do this. I need, that can all wait. This is something of a spiritual nature. It was called seeking God. 
You're not wasting your time when you sit at the feet of an aged disciple of Jesus Christ who walked through fires, walked through trials, survived battles, survived very serious times of crime for them to sit down there and talk to you. Don't you ever get bored with those stories. They'll bless your heart. Okay, he sought after God. We've got to hurry up. Go on over to chapter 31 to read a, another instance. Chapter 31, verse 20. And thus did Hezekiah, verse 20, 31, 20. Thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah, and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandments to what? To seek his God. He did it with all his heart and prospered. Let me tell you something about seeking after the things of God. To seek in the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Not a pack of foolishness that a bunch of apostate churches or seminaries have handed down. I'm talking about true wisdom that comes from revelation given by the Holy Ghost. It is a valuable commodity. And it is absolute worth you putting your heart into it. It said he sought it with all his heart. If you're going to seek God, don't do it half-heartedly. There's not much of a reward in half-hearted seeking. But if your heart is into it, I can't. I ain't got time to do this. I've got something on my mind. The Lord has put a scripture. i got to go search it out. I got to look up what it means in the Hebrew. I got to run references on it. I got to see examples of it in the Word. I got to get to the bottom of this thing. What is it that drives a man like that? I've had people tell me, well, Bruce, you, I think you take your religion a little too serious. <laughs> I don't think I take it serious enough. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation. If he's drawing, yield to that drawing. Say yes and be drawn out into the deep waters where you'll find treasures. And you know what? There's been men that have walked this earth that you look upon and people pity him. They, Poor old guy, didn't prepare for retirement or nothing, ain't got nothing. Lives in that little old room over there, lives in two or three little my lands. And look, he ain't don't wear the best or have the best. But that man has spent a life pouring over the scriptures, looking at God and saying, I don't understand some of these things, and I want a clear and a perfect understanding. I want to understand, God, what others are talking about. If it's wrong, I want to shuck it. If it's right, I want to eat it and devour it and let it become a part of me. I'm not saying all, but there's some people that have wound up with not a thing and they're just walking around taking them a walk and they, poor old guy, they don't realize within that frame, within that vessel of clay, there are eternal treasures that have been stored.